All right, folks, you are in the right place and the right time again, because it is the second half of our thrilling, scintillating Imposter Kings Saturday doubleheader. This time, match number two, Mr. Rogers versus Dolan. That's right. A lot of action, a lot of stress earlier tonight, a hard fought game and a lot to talk about here. And we are back here today. Your two broadcasters, see you in just one moment as we get ready to play the Imposter Kings again. Hi folks, welcome and good to see you again. I know some of you might've just stayed on the stream uh, after the tilt that ended about 90 minutes ago between our good friends, that would be Sasuke and Dancing Faraz. Dancing Faraz took that one seven to three. Cena, maybe you've just recuperated from that one because it was pretty tense. What were your thoughts coming out of that game? Well, I don't want to, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of stuff that happened in that game. I don't want to summarize it with just a quick sentence here. I actually am interested to see what those two players have to say for themselves. And luck have it, we would actually have them here with us right now for them to give us their thoughts about what happened. So we're going to be doing the interviews for Sasuke and uh, Dancing Pharaohs right now so before we start this next match. Great. All right. Yeah, we uh, didn't get a chance to properly recap at the end of that match. I'm sure folks were excited to put a face to those names and see exactly what happened over the course of those two hours, those two very intense hours. So who's going to be joining us first? So I think Sasuke, since he was the one who uh, was behind, is going to be joining us first. Uh, he is just coming on pretty soon here, uh, figuring it out. Uh, and he is, I think, going to be pretty disappointed with that outcome, but he um, he did a really hard fought, fought, fought battle there. Uh, he did some of his tricks, but ultimately fell to that final trap of that assassin hiding in the uh, successor card of Dancing Pharaohs. And Dancing Pharaohs started that game pretending like he didn't have it, um, but lo and behold, he was the one who was holding it. All right, I see Sasuke's here. Wow, with a very appropriate background for Sasuke. Wow, look at that. You know, it, it seems like you're in some sort of vortex or maybe you're going science. You know, there's a lot of things that could, could be happening here. But Sasuke, uh, as Cena was just mentioning, real tough loss there. Really, uh, really hard fought games. How are you feeling after that match? Well, Dan, I'm just sad that I let my sister down, to be honest. That's really who I was in it for. <laughs> um. But it was it was a tough loss, you know. Dancing for Oz came in, came in swinging. The first two hands, he had, um, you know, some great. Uh, he had both the royalties the first two hands, so I knew that was going to be an uphill battle going into the first two uh, first two rounds uh, there. And then at the end, with that, uh, you know, assassin bluff, which I, you know, was going back and forth on if it if it did happen. Like how was he playing this through? And you know, Gina had warned me that you know for Oz has the tendency dancing for has the tendency to play play coy like he doesn't know what he's doing but that that got to me that got the best of me today because i didn't uh, didn't anticipate that he'd be uh, bluffing me on the assassin there so so what's going to change going into the losers bracket for you what's your mindset i see that you're playing shane in the losers bracket <clears throat> next sunday at 9 p.m what are you going to do to prep for that well i'm going to watch uh, i'm going to watch shane's gameplay i'm going to watch how he played i'm going to you know see how he see how he strategizes and and I'm gonna watch my own gameplay to see, you know, what I can do better. Where did I make mistakes? And hopefully, I can pull some together to, you know, not make the same mistakes I made again. Because there's so much writing on this for me and, uh, you know, everyone. So Sasuke, one last question while we have you. So right, tournament play is a little bit different from, you know, play in various, uh, you know, uh, villainous clubs and other things that you're used to in your in your hard scrabble upbringing. You know. Is it different playing on the tournament here? Did you find that that influenced your play at all? Uh, playing in the tournament, what did add more stakes to it? You know, it did notice we're taking more time to choose. You know, in these um, in these local games that we play here, it's much more scrappy. It's much more rough and tough. And this was, you know, much more professional setting where I knew there was so much on the line uh, than just you know a quick win. It was pride and loyalty. There was so much involved here that I just wanted to make take the best time to make the decision. So definitely very different than uh, your local local games that happen in, the, in my hometown, at least. 
Well, well Sasuke, there you have it, folks. Thank you so much, Sasuke, for joining us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in the losers bracket. As I was mentioning to everyone, you have a lot of untapped potential with that discarding assassin uh, debauchery, and I can't wait to see what you do uh, in your matchup against Shane. Thank you, C9 Dan. Looking forward to it myself. Great. Thank you. That's Sasuke. We will see plenty more of him, including what is going to be a 100% unmissable match in the loser's bracket between Sasuke and Shane, two fierce competitors with elimination on the line. So you're not going to want to miss that one. That is a week from tomorrow, 9 p.m. Pacific, right here on this channel. Thanks, Sasuke. Thank you so much, Sasuke. Well, that's a tough one. I, uh, I know that uh, his sister's future is on the line here, so I think, <laughs> uh, think all of us are sweating that out. But he's shown a penchant for comebacks, and this might be just setting the stage for another dramatic arc. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, on the other side, however, uh, there is a winner on the other side, which is Dancing Faraz. He danced his way, uh, did a couple tricky plays, and made his way to uh, continue on the winner's bracket. He'll be joining us shortly. Uh, what did you think of uh, Dancing Faraz's plays there? You know, is is curious. It, you know, you mentioned prior to the match earlier today that uh, in the test games he had played extremely aggressively. Uh, that uh, you know, he showed no no regard for the assassin. That he played uh, trying to three point most hands. And what was interesting was that's not the dancing Faraz that we saw uh, this afternoon. He played very conservatively. Uh, played you know with a lot of caution in mind, especially for the assassin. And you know, ultimately, it's hard to argue with the results with the seven three win. So it was interesting to see that change in tactics. Yeah, I mean, I was surprised for sure. Um, I was a completely different dancing Faraz. And, you know, just like any type of dance that you'd find on the dance floor, uh, there's slow songs, fast songs. Um, you know, his heart was thumping when he was playing against me. I'm sure his heart was thumping here, but maybe to a different beat. So uh, would you say that his heart was dancing? I avoided that verb, but I appreciate you dragging it out of me. Yes. Um, let's see what he's uh, what he's got to say. Uh, I think he's still joining uh, our super secret private room here. Um, excited to see how he fares with the rest of the competition in the upper bracket. He's got Master X three twenty eight. Um, he's got Juno Balls. I believe Juno Balls is his next matchup. In fact, um, so how do you think he's going to fare against Juno Balls? It'd be interesting. I mean, Juno Balls has shown. I'm trying to think of the right adjective for it. Slyness? Uh, certainly the way in which he engineered that comeback yesterday they showed a very canny uh, a mind in terms of, uh, of bringing that back. And it'll be interesting to see that slyness against this more conservative dancing for us that we just saw earlier today. It'll be really interesting to see how that shakes out. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm kind of interested to see what kind of... I wonder if Juno Balls is going to be studying the tapes and seeing that uh, Dancing Faraz has got those tricks in his back pocket. So so one, one other thing to note, I'm seeing requests in the Twitch chat for you to read the bio of Sasuke. <laughs> uh, and, you know, that bio has got a lot of twists and turns in it all on its own. So I think it'd be hard to deny the audience that delight. Well, the, the thing is, is that I think uh, recognizing the name in the chat, it's a different bio that he wants me to read. And rest assured, all player bios uh, are mostly read forward for word. Uh, this is a family-friendly stream, however, so I'll just make sure that, uh, you know, keep that in mind. Looks like Pharaoh Z is here, and he is in like a villainous character in the darkness. Now he's peering up forward. How's it going, Dancing Pharaohs? Fine. How are you, Sina? I'm doing absolutely great. Uh, so you pulled away a quick victory there, seven to three against Sasuke. How did that make you feel? Uh, it felt pretty validating that I had been practicing and thinking about the game pretty nonstop for the past week. So all my hard work paid off. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I believe that's a koosh ball set in the back there too. I just wanted to throw that that's out correct there. i have a basketball hoop from my childhood there and another one from right there that's right dancing for us you know what a fascinating thing we're just talking about as we were chatting with sasuke earlier uh that uh, we were anticipating a very aggressive play style from you and instead we saw something different a whole new facet to the dancing Faraz approach uh, where you came in conservative you played 
uh, cautiously, and it seems to have rewarded you. Was that a conscious thing on your end? Uh, yes, it was. I, uh, I've been thinking for the past several days uh, about the best way to get the edge on my opponents, and I've come up with something. I'm not going to reveal what it is, but I've created a system of my own to uh, basically play the best that I can, and I used it um, to the utmost today, and it paid off. So I think I'm going to keep using my strategy uh, as I have been as I use today. And I will use in the future, and I will reveal what that strategy is uh, if and when I lose it all. If you win, if you win, if you lose it all, but you could possibly win this. You're in the upper bracket. So uh, final question here, you're going to be facing off, uh, I believe, against Juno Balls. Um, so, you know, there's already a VOD of him playing the game. What are you going to do to prep for that match? Uh, well, uh, I actually watched that VOD earlier before my game just to get an idea of uh, kind of your and Dan's uh, commentating style and how the players are playing. Uh, and I, unbeknownst to me, the winner of that game is who I'll be facing next. So. Uh, I will be doubly watching that VOD uh, to review the tape and try to figure out if I can get into Juno Balls' head uh, through some sort of online vibe <laughs> beforehand. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, and congratulations again for making it to the next round of the Upper Bracket. Thank you. I'm excited to continue. See you next <laughs> Thanks, Dancing for Oz. We'll see you, uh, we'll see you around. All right. There, well, there it is. Well, I mean, simple. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, Dancing for Oz with his trademark Z uh, to celebrate a victory there. He's very happy, as Johnny Go mentioned on the chat. He is a terrifying opponent in the winner's bracket. And we'll see how he fares in his next round match against Uniballs. Uh, clearly already studying his every move. Uh, if that doesn't strike fear into the heart of an opponent, then that opponent's heart is made of pure stainless steel. <laughs> All right, folks. Absolutely. Well, for all new folks joining for the back half of the doubleheader tonight, as we customarily do, it's time for How to Play the Imposter Kings. Stand by for that. So, How to Play the Imposter Kings. Let me just go ahead and pop that on the screen here. Same as it was earlier today. So, again... Players take turns playing a card from their hand onto the throne. The objective is to be the last player able to play a card. Cards can only be played on cards of equal or a lesser value. They have a special ability sometimes that allows them to get played on the current top card. So looking at a sample card right here, we have the Elder giving us again the fierce side eye like we just farted in church. That number on the top left-hand corner, that's a three. That means an Elder can be played on a current card that's three or less, but you may notice the text at the bottom that says you may play this card on any royalty. That means that Elder can also be played on the two royalty cards that are both big nines. So there are 18 cards in the deck, including two Elders. Each player is dealt eight. The remaining two are burned, one face up, one face down. It's always the same 18 cards, which means that a player, when they're dealt eight, knows that their opponent what they must have gotten except for that face down burn card, which throws a big question mark into everything. And information here is paramount. Each player also starts with a face up king card. And prior to each round, each player burns one card face down and selects one card as their successor card, which goes face down next to their king. So speaking of that king card, here is the king there giving his... I guess either his beard or his ponytail, a thoughtful uh, rasp. The king does two things. You can play the king once per hand to disgrace the current card on the throne and to take that successor card into your hand. So when that successor card is sitting face down in front of you, it's technically not part of your hand. When you play the king, that's when you get to pull it into your hand. So when we're talking about disgracing the card on the throne, a disgraced card has a value of one and no special property. So it gets flipped, it's worthless and meaningless, and it's sitting there. The opponent can play anything they want to on top of it. Looking at another sample card here, this is the Inquisitor. It's a four, as noted in the top left-hand corner. There's two of them in the deck of 18. The Inquisitor has a special ability where you may say a card name. Other players with that card in their hand must play one to their antechamber. What does that mean? Well, the antechamber 
If you have a card in there, it must be played next turn, regardless of whether it would otherwise be a valid play. So if you use your Inquisitor, not only do you get to guess a card that's in your opponent's name, thus getting more information, you also force their hand in terms of what they will play next turn. It's a great way of seizing initiative. A couple of last things to note. First of all, there on the left-hand side, that's the Fool. The Fool is a mere one, but it's very powerful because if you can use the Fool, any card that's face up on the table, you can take straight into your hand, often game winning all on its own. On the right hand side is the Assassin. Again, just a humble two, but if your opponent uses their king and you have the Assassin in your hand, you win, the game is over, their king is assassinated. So a lot of play you'll see is often about dealing with, fighting, or counteracting the Assassin because it can change a hand all on its own, even with its low number. Last thing to note, games are the seven points. And the way hands are scored, you get one point for winning, you get a point for the opponent still having a card in their hand when you win, and you get a third point for winning without ever using your king. So that's how you play Imposter Kings. Let's take a look at how the bracket in the tournament is shaping up right now. So as Cena mentioned, we just wrapped up the third of the four opening round games in this tournament with Dancing Faraz prevailing over Sasuke 7-3. That means Sasuke is going to be playing Shane in what is going to be a fierce tilt in the loser's bracket. It means Dancing Faraz is going to be playing Juno Balls in the winner's bracket of what should be a fierce game indeed. The one last first round game is about to happen right now. That's between Mr. Rogers and Dolan. The winner of that game will play Master X, who won our first game of the tournament. The loser will go on to play Johnny Go in the loser's bracket. That is sure to be fierce as well. All right. Well, let's jump back and talk about our competitors tonight. Cena, you want to tee that up? Yeah. So we both have uh, two veterans of this game, both uh, Mr. Rogers and, uh, and Dolan, who have been playing this game for about two years on and off. Um, Dolan infamously has been um, playing this game uh, at Chick-fil-A with the creator of the game uh, whenever they go out for their nightly Chick-fil-A. And, uh, and uh, Mr. Rogers is someone who has played all iterations of this game and has loved to annotate the game itself. And so he's actually been recording all of these games by hand. So we're going to have two heavy hitters here, two really good players who have played a lot of this game. And to start, Mr. Rogers' uh, character bio, he says that he has emerged from a monkish sanctuary in Montana to participate in one great final tournament. This final tournament will decide the fate of humanity and more. The Imposter Kings is a true test of intellect to separate the worthy from those who shall remain voiceless in an eternal vow of silence and shame. <laughs> wow. Uh, ringing endorsement. That will definitely be on the box. Um, so on the other side, we have Dolan, who has this to say about himself. Uh, Dolan graduated the top of his class in the Navy SEALs and has been involved in numerous Serret raids on Al-Qaeda and has over 300 confirmed kills. Uh, <laughs> he trained in guerrilla warfare and is a top sniper in the entire U.S. Armed Forces. His opponent is nothing but a target to him, and he will wipe them out with precision of likes that has never been seen on this earth. Mark his words. As we speak, Dolan is contacting his necro of spies around the U.S. and tracking his opponent's IP to prefer, IP, IP address, so prepare for the storm. Uh, he can be anywhere, anytime, and can defeat you in Imposter Kings in over 700 ways, and that's just with his bare hands. Not only is Dolan excessively trained in Imposter Kings, but he has access to the entire arsenal of the United States Marine Corps and will use the full extent to excite what extent to wipe out your king, your dead kiddo. So less of a um, bio there and more of just a uh, copy pasta from the internet. So really proud of both of these candidates uh, who are coming to play this game. And certainly neither of them will get a talking to after this game. Yeah, that was uh, pretty intense. I'm almost frightened to broadcast <laughs> this game after that uh, bio, but uh, he knows be, your IP address. He does know the, my IP address, and there's Navy SEALs on their way. So, well, anyway, folks, <laughs> as, as Todd Sam points out, you know, the Navy SEALs in the Marine Corps, that's not the same thing. Anyway, uh, folks, it's time to play the Imposter King. Seeing anything you want to toss in before we go into Imposter King Stadium? Oh, I can't hear you anymore, Dan. You can't, but the stream okay, is live. Okay, now I can. Okay, uh, I was great. just asking anything uh, that you have uh, to throw in there before we jump into Imposter King Stadium. 
No, I think it's time to go. Let's see what they have to offer us. All right, here we go. See you all in the stadium. There it is, folks. Mr. Rogers and Dolan there and ready to rock, doing the shuffle for their first deal. And the first thing to decide is who is going to get that first player king, the one who gets to the side, who goes first with the first hand. And so it's going to be Dolan. Okay. Uh, wait, you're not going to wait to look at the uh, cards? <laughs> Looks like Dolan boldly oh, yeah, with his Marine <laughs> Corps knowledge just wants to choose that Mr. Rogers is going first before even looking at his hands. So going right in, let's take a look at those burn cards. So the face-up burn card is going to be the soldier. The face-down burn card around. is yeah. the queen. Wow. Interesting. So he's already got the queen as one of the Here as one of the face down cards. That's going to play a big thing because the other player is going to think that they have that. That's right. Whenever it's a royalty card face down, you inevitably think that your hand is worse than it is because you assume the opponent has that powerful card even though they don't. And that is across both sides. So since Dolan was the one that picked the first player king, let's start with his hand first. And it's colorful. It's a rainbow hand. One Elder, one Zealot, Inquisitor, Soldier, Oathbound, Mystic, King's Hand, and Princess. Cena? Yeah, I mean, I really would have liked to see a, a Fool or an Assassin here, but this is a pretty solid hand that can kind of hold its own. He's at least got the Mystic and the King's Hand to deal with the Assassin. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think Dolan will play this hand, and I think he'll play it cautiously, probably have um, Mr. Rogers go first. This is a good hand to feel out your opponent. Jumping across the table with Mr. Rogers' hand, there is the Fool, there is the Assassin. Again, the whole rainbow. Elder, Inquisitor, Oathbound, Warlord, Sentry. And sitting on the right-hand side, the Judge. Almost certainly getting burned with it sitting out there. What's your thoughts, Cena? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, I think this is an interesting hand as well. The thing is, is that they don't know that he, the Queen, is the thing that's burned down. So this looks a lot worse for Mr. Rogers than it actually is. And I'm, I'm curious to see how he's going to approach this. If he's going first, I wonder what he wants to pull out, um, whether it's going to be the King's hand or if it's going to be that Mystic to try to get rid of some of that um, utility power. That's right. It'll be interesting to see what he chooses the burn and successor again with the Fool and the Assassin in his hand. All right, well, there it is, folks. Let's go ahead and give him the signal and begin the first hand of this fourth match. Card and save a card. Do you have a sense of who's going first? Yeah, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> so Dolan just always going to choose uh, his opponent to go first because one time he lost the game by running out of cards, and so uh, we'll see if that comes to bite him in the, later on. Bite him in the patoot? Is that what you were reaching for, Cena? Bite him. I just said bite him. Uh, I'm looking at that little goat uh, as his avatar picture. So let's see what he's burning here. Uh, looks like, uh, oh, he's burning an Oathbound. Interesting decision. That's going to, I mean, the Oathbound has a lot of utility, right? Um, and so it's interesting that he chose that over the soldier. Hmm. Both players taking their time. The Zella is the natural choice for the successor, and he decides to go with that. Let's see what uh, Mr. Rogers is thinking here. He is frozen All in right. fear. I should be good to go whenever you are. Just kidding. He's just deliberating. He's burning his Inquisitor Hmm. as a person who's going first. Really interesting. So now I have no idea what he's going to play first because probably uh, there's the... no natural starters in his hand. Well, the judge, which we were assuming he's burning, oh. is a good good, good starter right. on its own. But it comes. that judge on the right side there. Yeah. Come as well. Elder going All face right. down. My turn first. I got to think he's going to lead off with that judge. Good move to put the elder face down because he suspects that Dolan's got both of the royalty cards. And you figure he'll use the king flip on the first one and he can do that safely knowing the fool and the assassin are both in his hand. I'm waiting for this 9D move. Yeah. Well, he is about to bust out that 9D move, the judge, which we both um, thought was going to get burnt. Kind of interesting he's choosing judge rather than the uh inquisitor here uh is he really so does he think that judge. dolan's got a five or he should know that and, uh, I know maybe he thinks he would have burned mystic. it he calls the i mystic. do have the mystic okay so he hits on that now the curious thing check. is yep. what will he want to follow that up with or will he want to follow that up with 
perplex, per, honestly, perplex, perplexing play and at I'm the beginning here. The card in my... Okay, so no, no, okay. He was hovering over the sentry. I was like, is he going to do the sentry? All right, so here he's right, going to counter play... with his own soldier. The soldier. Um, do you have the assassin? I do. All right. Then that is a seven. Dolan may also burn some cards here. He probably wants to because he's got the mystic. Play but the he didn't. Warlord. But he didn't. So Warlord coming out just as a seven. Just normal, normal good old seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dolan definitely surprising not taking the opportunity to flip the judge knowing he has the mystic and that would set the mystic up for a play. That said... With a rainbow hand like they both have, that does cut down the effectiveness of the Mystic because it could really only target one card. And it would be especially dangerous knowing that Will likely, Mr. Rogers, likely has the Fool in his hand. That's right. He's thinking about playing that Mystic. Um, I really like a, a strong princess play here. Uh, of course, I know where the queen is, but... I think I'm going to play my mystic so there's the mystic and then i'm going to say oh he can't use the ability. can't can't do that again note if there are any disgraced cards in oh, court you may disgrace this card use the ability oh because there's no disgraced cards in the court never mind i don't use the ability uh, do you want do you want to take it back or no <laughs> no 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 go ahead Coppice Cal shouting the eights. The eights have got their fans out there. If there's any number that's got the biggest fan base all on its own, it's definitely the eights. Oh, man. Mr. Rogers thinking whether he's going to play those eights. Um he could also fool Oathbound into grabbing a seven, but I think he's he's got his eye on the prize for a bigger I thing. Think or maybe I not. I am going to oh. say... Nope. There he goes. Oathbound. And then, uh, because it's played on a seven, mm -hmm. I can use the fool. Yep, that's what I was going to try and get rid of with the mystic. <laughs> uh -huh, I thought so. And, uh... I'll take the Warlord back into my hand. Take oh, Mystic is disgraced. Oh. Found. Yes, Mystic is disgraced. Okay. All right, All right the so old Oathbound Fool. I picked the Warlord. Okay. Oathbound Fool combo here. So Will thinking about the fact, again, that Dolan likely right. has two royalty cards, hence making the Warlord more powerful. All right. The Fool. He um, should get rid of that Assassin with that Inquisitor now. We'll see if he does it. He knows he has it. Actually. Hmm. You can't uh, King's Hand it if that's what you're thinking. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do. Okay. So he knows that Mr. Rogers has the Assassin in his hand, so I think the Inquisitor Assassin is the play here. Okay. Inquisitor. Let's... Play. Maybe he's going for the kill. Let's play that assassin. Okay. Nope. Takes the safe okay. option. I play I that the right thing to, to do. my antechamber, and then it immediately goes out onto the pile. And then there's a Will, different. always being a good educator, explaining the rules. So he knows that Mr. Rogers has the um, Warlord because he picked can up I... the Fool. Ooh. Um, I guess there is... This is hard. I'm trying to remember what I had. There. I, th I think I'm good. You, think you're I'm allowed good. to look. Uh, press yeah, uh, it's... Alt Shift. Uh, alt Shift. Okay. Some oh, good okay. Nature. That's nice. Okay, yeah. I remember that card. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, I'm going to go with... Actually, you know what? Bam. Big eights. Oh, casual eight, huh? Casual eight yeah. coming out. Interesting. Yep. No longer has the assassin the fear, so he can play the king's hand without needing to reserve it. Uh, I'm going to. And if you want to, feel free to play like to the right of it, so don't oh. keep. Oh, they're yep, so yep, polite yep. to each other. Um, it's yeah. like out of control how polite they are, and I love it. I will not reprimand them for their bios now. So Johnny Go pointing out, 
that that sentry could reclaim the assassin. You know you want to. Oh, that is, yeah, he has no defense to that because he just got rid of I his king's hand. To, you're right. I was thinking about that. Uh, I'm going to play the sentry and use this ability to yep, grab Yeah, here it comes. Mm. He's got to trade the card, so trade. his right. warlord's got to go so in. So a new thing since it's, uh... Uh. oh, exchange. Oh, that's that's right. The sentry trade you you trade Wait, so with the sentry. To... Often forgot. Uh, when I use the sentry, mm -hmm. I have yep. to exchange a card from my hand. Oh, okay. Let me think here. If um, and you pull the assassin back in your hand. So you said. So it becomes a riskier play. I mean, again, the sentry is not a flip to become a fool. It, you do have to make the trade. So this really is a oh, gutsy is call. Tough. It's does he want to win or does he want to uh, play for survival? I mean, you can just like, um, you, you can burn your queen if you want. That's fine. <laughs> there you go. A little bit of mind games. It's probably the, it's the right play. But the problem is that Dolan like, is I now that, telling him I information. I think that I'm going to go a little wild on this one and Ooh. exchange out the Warlord. Ooh. A little wild. Ooh. You know, we've seen a lot of conservative play the last two games, so to see someone lay it out there so to wait, go so for the big kill. It's still the sentry, right? It's still, uh, sentry is the straight. Oh, okay. Because I use this ability. Well, you know, we're going big brain. Here we go. Big brain. Oh, and he's going to swap. Here, you know what? It's starting here. Oh, ho, ho, brutal. And... Is he gonna swap? Pick a player, both of you choose, and you know swap he has in his head. Hmm. That's right. You know you are getting the assassin. But the only issue is he has to give up that elder. But it's the right play to do. He's got to do it, I think. Does he not? Well, is is hideaway is a zealot, which is very <laughs> Shoot, safe. I think I lost. Okay. Um. Yeah. Just. Uh, I don't want to swap. You can go ahead. Well, the reason why he didn't is because I he's convinced. My king, which disgraces the princess. He was convinced he Mr. Rogers' is, yeah, hideaway was the queen. Okay. Ugh. And it's a safe and sensible play, and You're that fine. seems yeah, like something. Like, I'll just play. It's not worth the time to think. I'm out. That's a three point hand for Your shot. Mr. Rogers. There you go. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's after that one. Ooh, if I had swapped, queen, then. God damn, that's uh crazy. Oh, oh I had man, a zealot under here. That yeah. has to be gutting. Yeah, for... I figured you had the zealot, um, but I thought you had the queen and the princess in your hand. Oh no, Whew. that was that was beautiful. Okay, that was a close play. I, I think he should, he he's gonna bite, he's gonna kick himself a little bit for not swapping there. But um, yep, that's uh, three points to Mr. Rogers, um, and yeah. Yeah, that, uh, again, it all came down to the information. They, uh, again, the fact that the queen was the face-down burn card was what really, I think, stayed his hand on that trade, and it bit him hard. So Mr. Rogers up 3-zip, a three-point hand to start it all, and that means now Dolan will get the true king, or keep the true king, decide who goes first. So, all right, well, the deals are out. They face up burn card. Uh, the queen is burned again. Uh, although this time will be face up, burn the face down is the elder. Interesting combo there. Hmm. All right, taking a look at Dolan's hand. Fool, elder, inquisitor, soldier, soldier, oathbound, warlord, princess. Interesting combination of things with the oathbound fool combo. What do you think, Cena? Yeah, I think uh, I think that is. Uh... A pretty interesting hand. I mean, it's just a standard hand. He doesn't have the mystic to be able to take care of those eights, um, which makes it kind of tough. But he's already indicating that he's going to get rid of one of the soldiers. Um, he does have the oathbound full combo. So we're looking at a pretty standard hand here. Uh, those eights are going to be really worrying. And he knows that he has the only nine, and the uh, he does not know that he has the only elder. So I could see him starting the game trying to inquisit out the elder to no avail. That's right. I would agree with that. Also, I think this hand is going to hinge on the play of the Fool and use of the Warlord. Going across the table. So Will gets the Assassin again. Uh, Mr. Rogers does. A two, a Assassin, Inquisitor, Zealot, Judge, Oathbound, Mystic, Sentry, and King's Hand. So both Eights and the Mystic in his hand along with the Assassin. Powerful combination. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Mystic and two eights, that's going to be pretty tough um, for, that's going to be pretty tough, I think. So, so yeah, I mean, with the Assassin, he's kind of has the power play here and I'm wondering, uh, you know, who Dylan is, uh, sorry, who Dolan's going to make go first in this, in this case, because it's really going to determine who wins this game, I think. That's right. Interesting decision. And we'll see it here in one, two, three. Oh, wow. There we go. He burned the soldier. Looks like... Right. And he... So, so in this case, Dolan burns a soldier and pops the Warlord as the hideaway card. Interesting. And he's already playing. That's pretty oh. quick. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry, I literally... It's fine. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Safe to say he's going first, no, was, Dolan is. Yeah, not like I was, I was it's not like I was big-braining the first card anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it looks like Mr. Roger is tossing away the Zealot. Interesting decision. Usually when you toss the Zealot, it means that your hand is built on numbers pressure. Zealot's about survival. You don't expect the hand to get that deep when you toss the Zealot. And the Assassin, again, is his successor. So hiding it away from an inquisiting aspect. I'm actually yeah. surprised a little bit. I would be influenced by Dylan playing the soldier first to maybe get more aggressive, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. And I actually told the players to hold for a second. I think there's a rules clarification um, with that last hand. Uh, so I'm looking at the notes here, and the person who's annotating has pointed out that that was likely a two-point hand because after Dolan played the princess, uh, Mr. Rogers had to flip his king. So that was actually a two-point hand rather than a three-point hand, and I'm just making sure here. That's right. And Dot Sam, the burn card is the Elder. The Elder is the face down burn card. So we're going to review the tape on that, but that's true. The uh, game. Did we get the points wrong? Oh, yeah, you had to flip your king. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. The game doesn't end until the last play is made, which can be significant for we're scoring. I'm just on the Discord, and he's uh, giving us bad advice. DJ's <laughs> limbo. <laughs> of course, it's a thankless exactly. job over here when I'm uh, when I'm trying we're to do led astray. So it, was, uh, it so it was two points, and uh, yeah. Um, so thank you also to observers, careful observers who are figuring this out. All right, so uh, I think we can go ahead um, for this hand. Right. So two zip, well, Mr. Rogers, Dolan you know going first. I'm going to change what I was going to do. Ah, uh -oh. he's going to lead off with that Inquisitor. It looks like a bad call. But we're gonna go. We're gonna try something new. All right. Um, Inquisitor to start is something new. That's like the most common starting card. What's different? I was gonna start. I started with a different card back when you were still getting your stuff. Right. <laughs> um. So uh, do you have a? Um, you can call any card, right? Any, yes, any card. Any card. Okay. Wait, hold on, um, let me check that. Anyway. Uh, yeah, any card. Okay. Um, Mr. Rogers known for reading the rules and making sure to point out any inconsistencies I have. How many of those are in there? I have to play it. Hmm, interesting. Um, but I get the ability. Let's go. Just, uh, if you got an elder, go ahead and play it. Ah, uh, Cena, you called it. Uh, I do not. Cool. Right. So he's either um, his, he thinks it's either successor or out of the game. Your we'll turn. see. I like it. Indeed. Now Mr. Rogers is a little concerned, I'm sure. Especially now, yeah, he he be very curious and, and maybe a little cautious here, but again, he's got numbers pressure outside of the royalty card, so it'll be interesting to see what he does. One thought for him would be press hard and early. Use the sevens and the eights to fish the princess out. Get Dolan sweating. The judge. And 
Do you have an oath bound? Uh, I do. Okay. I get to play a card to my antechamber. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to play. There we go. He's getting rid of his lower value cards by by comboing them. Um, not as effective as if Dolan doesn't. Dolan keeps holding on to the soldier, yeah, which is uncommon, and so it's actually um, the soldier is really powerful counter assassin. to the judge. Checking for the I assassin. Do. Okay. Does not have the assassin. Dolan, uh, sorry, Mr. Rogers now has to play as Inquisitor. Go and, ahead. And I think what Dolan would want to do is I guess play wrong. the Inquisitor from my. Um... So you can flip this king. From your antechamber. Oh god. Look at this. Uh I am going to call yeah, out the Princess. There it is. Yep. Mm. Smart call. Here it is. Johnny goes calling this out. And then for my turn, I'm going to flip my king. Cool. So Smart she's play. disgraced. He's dealt with the queen, or sorry, he's dealt with the princess, gained tempo, and now has the assassin in his hand. Really right. brilliantly played. And he did that all without exposing a high card for full counterplay. Not much Correct. in there for Dolan, except he could use that to grab an Inquisitor okay. to try to draw mm -hmm. that assassin out. Only issue there is that Dol uh, sorry, Mr. Rogers has the king's hand, which can stop the, the fool right in its tracks. This is going to be a tough one for Dolan, I think. Of course, Mr. Rogers could okay. also just wait until he uses the Inquisitor to also King's Hand it. Let me see this false sense of security. The risk with that, however, is that he can Oathbound into the Inquisitor to force... Um, once oh, you use the Oathbound, it Try can't be canceled by the, the King's Hand. Take the Inquisitor. Or, yep. So that's his only hope right, right now. Turn, Mr. Rogers. Stand by, I'm thinking. Yeah, Dolan is handicapped by the fact he has that elder in his hand, uh, which he's not going to find any use. Correct, yeah. Mr. Rogers realizes that he got it. He just wants to make sure that he doesn't lose his advantage here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I just realized that the queen is out this game. Yeah, you know, it, it, and oh, again... Did you not realize that? I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. There is no queen in this game. Yeah, no problem. Mr. That's Rogers good. just always being the, the most polite oh, individual. I guess you had the princess instead of the queen? <laughs> well, no, I just you thought I had, oh, you thought I had it. Um, yeah. Dolan giving away that he kept an elder for really no good reason, knowing that he had the only royalty card in play. I am going to... Is he really going to Mystic the Mystic. Four? Mm -hmm. And there are disgraced cards in the court. Yep, so I'm going to flip it, and I am going to nullify fours. <laughs> I can't believe All it. Right. He's actually going to do it. So those become a three after you play them, but they still have a four value uh, of four before they are played. I think I like that play. It's, I mean, it's the final dagger. There's a so couple of ways he can throw the same, dagger. Except, <laughs> except he doesn't have an ability anymore. Correct. All right. Right. Mr. Rogers knows he has numbers on Dolan, so the key thing is just having more cards than Dolan does to I'm force the king that. flip. You know, if I'm at Dolan here, actually, I'm thinking about the Oathbound, so that way he couldn't use the Oathbound combo, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter in the end of the day. Yep, he's going to have to Oathbound into his newly neutered Inquisitor. It's either that or die. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm afraid death is going to come pretty shortly after. Or it's... Yeah, it's going to be hard to push off. I'm going to play a casual Oathbound. And that should cook his goose. Dolan, no cards left to play, forced into a king flip. 
Ah, uh, Mr. Rogers oh, doing there we go. the <laughs> Sinbu the twirl. <laughs> You're already spinning the assassin. <laughs> there it is. Boom. All right, yes. Mr. Rogers. Really polite throughout One that entire game assassin. until that end there. Doing a little bit of show. Beating. At well, least he didn't really mess me up. If I, I was going to judge the and you really almost screwed my, my whole strategy for that. Um... So is that one or two points? Yeah, it's two, because um, I technically had one card in my hand when I flipped the... That's right, and... Well, no, because that was the card... You had no cards in your hand. No, I had one because uh, I flipped the king. A little yeah, bit of a rules dispute. It is two points to Mr. Rogers, because it's okay. not only if you have cards in your hand... Oh, no, you did flip um, the king. Wait. That's why you got two instead of three. Uh, let gotcha. me just go ahead and agitate here uh, um they uh the part of the rules uh, is if you really flip king or still have a successor so handing that fool move so here they go setting up for the next round yeah another strong play by mr rogers wouldn't say he set a foot wrong there and uh, yeah he's gotten off to a great start tonight so all right hand number three is dealt the face up burn card is in oathbound the face down burn card is a mystic interesting all right dolan retains the first player king let's see what's in his hand and it's a pretty strong one uh fool inquisitor judge soldier soldier king's hand sentry princess so he's got the fool but no oath bound the combo with it and a good top end cena yeah i mean the double eights is really what's defining this hand he's got no elders as you mentioned and just a lot of fives that's a lot of fives. Yeah, usually it's not a great sign when you have all three fives in your hand, but this is one of the stronger hands you can get with that combo. Going across the table, cornering the market on threes is Mr. Rogers, the assassin <laughs> wow. again, all three of the threes, Inquisitor, Oathbound, Warlord, Queen. So I know what he's thinking. He's thinking, I got to Inquisit that, that mystic out of his hand sooner than later because otherwise I'm going to lose all my threes. However, unbeknownst to him, the mystic is face down and neither player knows that. That's right. And I should note again, this is the kind of hand that's what I like to call a survive and stab hand. You got that assassin. You don't have great pressure cards, but you can survive very well. And if he can hang around long enough, eventually the time will come to stab. We'll see if that's the way he plays it. Correct. Yep. And, I mean, the only thing that's preventing me from mulliganing this hand is the fact that I have the assassin. Because if I didn't, then I would be terrified of the assassin. But since he has it, he can figure it out. That's so. right. So, Johnny Go pointed out, it seems like Mr. Rogers is the only person this tournament playing aggressively. And he definitely has so far. And it's working for him. And it'll be interesting to see if that influences play in the next uh, round. Do you have a sense of who's going first? Um, you go first. They okay, so it looks like I think this is good for Mr. Rogers because he wants to go first to inquisit probably the mystic, honestly, um, unbeknownst to him. So we'll see what he decides to do. So no surprises, Mr. Rogers burned an elder. You don't need two when you have one royalty card. And his successor is the Zealot, common play. Burn card, ah, Dolan goes and burns the fool. Figured without an oath bound, it wasn't the way to go. And uh, all right. He's hiding it. He's decided to hide his assassin. Interesting. Mr. Rogers decided, that, yeah, to put the assassin back in the hideaway spot. Dolan just tucking away a soldier, one of his three fives interesting to burn the fool when you've got three fives in your hand but uh yeah we'll see how this plays out especially with dolan giving the first move to mr rogers yeah i mean with two eights and a nine i think i could get them to flip and so um yeah um i think i would have kept that fool but uh i know oh, johnny go and others would probably have a different first. opinion about that so I think uh, Mr. Rogers has taken his time for the first move here. I yeah. think. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, it'd be interesting to see. Start off with oh. an inquisitor, as is common, and I'm going to ask if you have. It's gonna be the mystic. The mystic. Yep, totally called it. I do not have the mystic. He does it by the book, um, uh, Mister Rogers, and you realize mystic is not one that most people keep face down. Um, you can right. absolutely, but. I'm going to go. I'll say, do you have? He's got to check for the assassin, I think. Yeah, no, the will has so. has a record of tucking Stashing it away. away. Yeah. yeah. He certainly does. An elder. Ah, huh. interesting move. That's one reason why you don't burn yeah. both elders sometimes, but yeah. Oof. The nice he would have liked to. He would have liked to keep that one, I think. And the other nice part about pulling an elder out with an inquisitor, besides taking advantage of a group of folks like me, is it does give you an open play um, next. And I will ask about a. Um... Dolan's sitting really pretty here. It's a good start to a hand for so far for him. Let's go. Do you have any other elders? <laughs> interesting he really wants to make sure I like that I mean I think that it. that information really gives him a lot it does let uh, Mr. Rogers know however that he does not have any elders yeah that's right and the other thing is having a soldier be a 7 here is important because he knows he's got numbers on Mr. Rogers and now he gets to play against the 5 against the 7 which re instead of a 7 which really opens up options in his hand I think it, just it would... allows him essentially to either be more convinced to play the zealot versus the oathbound. The oathbound and the zealot. So yeah, it opens up the rest of his hand, if you will. Yeah, I, in cases like those, you're trying to put numerical pressure on your opponent. A soldier as a seven can do a lot of that, and uh, I probably would have been more conservative in that guess. He's debating whether he's going to flip his king right now. I think because he wants to make sure he has the assassin waiting on the other side. I'm Man, I've played against Mr. Rogers think. so much, I feel like I just know his moves. There it is. Okay, so <laughs> fetches the assassin, telegraphing the fact he now has it, and Dolan now knows that's what he's looking at. He's got the king's hand as his one safeguard against it. Correct. Oh, I hear lots of typing, so I feel like I'm about to get a question. Can ask you know dumb question in the Discord. I decided not to. <laughs> All right. That's fine. And if you want to do it, you can ask him in the. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, it, it would just be a meme anyway. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, Dolan elects to make his memes in the dreams. Yeah. Little does he know he needs to raise his hand for the uh, moderator to come by and uh, adjudicate from the table, listening to both sides of the case, adjusting points accordingly, penalizing others. Um really strict rule set we got here all right so he goes with the sentry will he use the ability i doubt it unless he wanted that elder but that's a heck of a thing to give up the sentry for not the ability. So not using the ability wants to put pressure numerical Mr. Rogers pressure. has that has that zealot and he's also got the queen those are the and you could always oath bound normal eight him. Just the normal eight, he says. Okay, I am going to play the zealot, mm -hmm. and since I have, if I have flipped my king, I can play that on any value card. We should just scrap our intro where A we well talk about the rules. Card, if I do say so myself, <laughs> and instead just have Will uh, explain to us the game. It's really balanced. great how he uh, really talks through what he's thinking there. <laughs> All right. Um, I see. This on. is the zealot with the queen's pin That's rather good. than the king's pin. <laughs> All right, so he goes ahead and hits the hits the princess. Pops the princess. Bring that queen out. Out. Go. It's good. You don't want to give Mr. Rogers the chance to play the warlord with royalty out. So doing princess. Uh, do you want to use the ability or no? Um. That's a good question. Oh boy. Um. He'd get that crummy assassin. Well, but maybe that's not so bad. Then he doesn't have to worry about the assassin. 
<laughs> that's one way of getting rid of it. That's actually no. one one way that we commonly don't see. He elects not to. Uh, I will bring it to you. Here it comes. I do like what Johnny Go was saying in chat here king? with the oath. Oh balance. no, he flipped his king and he's dead meat. Nope, he's got the. King's oh, hand. Okay, ah, that's right. So he pulls out the assassin Where with the king's is, hand. Uh, he's but, still got to pick up his card. Oh, hold on, he's going. <laughs> Actually, how it, is that how it would work? Am I technically wait? Seems All right, like, let's wait. let's yeah. play this through properly. It's technically oh. it's technically your turn now. I think. That, actually that is correct, yep. Because uh, Dolan flipped his king, then there's the assassin and uh, king's hand play. play. It's not going to matter because this is going to end up uh, being a two-point hand. Yep, that's a bummer. Good yep, and I think I'm out, actually. Another two-point hand for uh, Mr. Rogers, going 6-0, but we've seen people come right. back, uh, like Ooh, the infamous nice. uh, Shane, like the in Shane, Shane and Juno points. balls, where he went 5-0 yep. and then came back and won the game. So don't count Dolan out just yet as we go into uh, a 6-0 lead for Mr. Rogers. That's right. So, yep, 6-zip, Mr. Rogers up with a dominating advantage, although nothing is foregone. He does still have his mulligan left, does Dolan. One question for you, Cena. If you were Dolan there, and we said he got off to a very good start, what would you have done differently? Oh, I mean, that's a great question. It was just, uh, I mean, the Inquisitor, he has to play a little bit more around. He has to respect the Assassin a little bit more, I think. And I think that he spent a lot of his time trying to get rid of the Assassin in conventional ways at the end. I think if he just respected it and kept an Elder, or sorry, uh, uh, Inquisitor, that could have helped him out a little bit. All right, six zip, face up burn card this time is the princess and the face down is the sentry. So they're going to be two weaker than really usual high, hands. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, let's take a look at Dolan's hand. Fool, zealot, elder, elder, soldier, judge, oathbound, mystic. So you're always, you, this, you always get spooked when you're missing eights and nines. What are you <laughs> thinking if you're him? I think I would probably have to mulligan this one, um, especially when six zero. Um, you, this is a hand that you'd probably want to just hold. Yeah, I would agree there. As, as he's uh, actually choosing the mulligan, I think, right yeah, now. Um, so as right. he said on stream, he I said, am. this is just straight up buns. <laughs> so, they're resetting here. So that is a mulligan to the second player, Dolan. Uh, he could have taken out the eights, but even one of the eights. Do you want to flip over here, that sentry so... frame? There you go. Oh, that would have been, been really I think that was a smart move. Yeah. Acknowledging the smart move there. All right, well, so now both players have used their mulligan up. Dolan's got to hope for a better hand here and some luck from the cards. Uh, Mr. Rogers has not used his mulligan quite yet. He did. <laughs> he did? Oh yep. <laughs> huh. So, I think could you will. imagine a hand being worse than that one? <laughs> get, get ready for it, boy. <laughs> it's coming up. God. Amazing. Uh, all right, oh, no. so all the right. face well, up for encourage the elder. If I get a point with this hand. I think, I think you're gonna be in trouble. <laughs> because... Face down is the zealot. Give me a false sense of confidence. Okay, let's let some the analysis. <laughs> so let's go over to. I think. Uh, can you flip over uh, our good friend Dolan's uh, king there? There we go. Okay, all so. Right. Yeah, face up's the elder, face down is the zealot. Let's look to see if Dolan got a better hand. Marginally better. Assassin elder, two inquisitors, two soldiers, warlord, and the princess. I mean, I would say it's worse. Uh, it's not great. At least this time he has the assassin, so he knows that he could get a free flip on the king. Um, I mean, it's not great either. Um, there's no mystic. It would have been way nicer if he had actually a mystic on the instead of the warlord. Um, he does have the princess, which we've seen has come out in magical times. I don't know. This is a tough hand, but if you can get a double Inquisitor guestathon, um, he'll be doing really well. <laughs> That's right. He really does need to dictate tempo, and with a hand like this, going first would be advisable. Over yeah. on the other side of the table, Fool Judge Mystic, both oath bounds, both eights, and the oh. queen. <laughs> oh my God, Great top so end. Brutal. Uh, you know, this is going to be a hard one, I think, for Dolan to deal with. Well, I certainly think we're going to end on time here because um, this is an absolute...
destructive hands. Um, he's got both eights. He's got the full oathbound combo. He just got to make sure he doesn't fall into that that uh, that uh, assassin trap. And if I was if I was Mister Rogers, I literally will flip my king super early after playing the judge. If I was going first. Yeah, I would agree. This is going to be interesting. I don't think Dolan is absolutely done. That is a hand you could potentially win with, but it's going to require a couple of breaks and some excellent play. Sure thing. All right, here it is. Let's okay. see what they do. Um, who's going first? Um, <laughs> that's a fantastic question. Um, I mean, the Inquisitors can't even really guess anything other than the Oath Bounce. This is just tough. Uh, it's going to be bad either way. Um, I... You've got to survive to assassinate if you're Dolan. That's the only way out. You've just got to survive to assassinate. Let me Can you uh, hover over the cards while they're oh, okay. throwing them away? Actually, well, actually, I don't know if I get to do that. I think maybe I have to make the call before we choose our cards. Because I mean, no, you, you're you're choosing, you can you're, Yeah, I would say you're, what you might discard or whatever might be different based on whether you're going first or second, right? Oh, yeah, I won't put my cards down until... Um, but you get to choose whenever you want. You just have to, um, you know, not take too long. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> I'll go first. Well, actually, no, you, um, yeah, I'll go first. I'll go first. Okay. So just as a quick reminder, Zealots, the face down burn here. Dolan has tossed away one of his soldiers as his burn. Oh, dear. This is just... I am sweating for Dolan right now, and I'm really hoping he can pull out one of those um, 9D chess moves. Uh, he's going to really have to call on his buddies in the Marine slash Navy Corps to help him out here. I'm trying to think of how I would play this. I don't think I'm going to get to this point. You know, you can always pick a mulligan for only two points. <laughs> uh. <laughs> we'll troll on him a little bit. You know, you, know you, think, you think this is hard for you. I'm having trouble choosing what I'm going to put as my successor. So, oh, that's he's, great. Yeah, he's flotted right now. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I Will's feeling very. Like, oh, here's some combos I could do, and they all end up with me losing the game. <laughs> so it's going to be good. Will's right, feeling um... very confident. So Will's chucked one of his oath bounds against Soldier that got chucked by Dolan. I don't know. I'm trying to think of how how to win with that hand. So I, you know, I mentioned before that that that's a hand that one could win with. I really, I think, again, the only play here is to survive, okay. and then I'll, I'll go first. use a princess trade to. Go ahead and flip your king. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Did the old soup around? I like that. So judge is the successor for. Rogers, right. I think if I'm Dolan, and I said I go first, it's the princess the trade that's going to save this for me. Probably flipping early and often, so you got that assassin baby. Put it out now. Here's doing it. Do not. Ah, uh, <laughs> going straight. He's figure going straight full. Hail yeah. Mary, ninety chess it. Just what the hell? Play the mind games. He doesn't have much to lose. What you no, know? Mr. Rogers is going to catch on to this. He, 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 he's very cautious when people do this. We'll see what happens. Gotta respect the game. Let's just let's just go for it. <laughs> All right. So, I would just honestly. Oh, cards in the well, Will can can. Hey, uh, an elder on that and then he's got a nice warlord that's true he could he could also flip oh, his king with no fear because there right. won't be anything up for a fool to pick up um, oh nice yep you're right cool it's uh all other cards in the court the queen is doesn't necessarily change my strategy though so <laughs> mm -hmm. we'll see um I'm going to uh, plop this bad boy down there. That's true. It is true that the Warlord... The, the problem with the Warlord play is the Oathbound is his out there. Yeah. I'm going to that. If he can draw the Oathbound out... The... Card in the... 
There is. And I... Choose a number. Hard. I am going to choose. He might just choose two here if he's feeling really confident. Well, two would be the, the soft play. That that would guarantee him, I think, a win here. Yep. But, uh, I went after the Warlord instead. Sounds good. Also uh, a, a, a reasonable play. All right. So it might not be a bad thought turn. for Will or for Dolan. So you know, that princess trade is his saving grace. His friend? Yep. And so you do have a... Oathbound. I do. There you go. Uh, he needs to disgrace. Seven. He needs to disgrace cards. He's, he's. This is going to lose him the game if he doesn't realize that he needs to disgrace well, cards because you know, of the fool. Yeah. You do that, knowing that I have an oathbound. Uh, he needs to disgrace cards. I'll let otherwise, you take that back if you want. Just to <laughs> oh my gosh, Will playing his hand for him. No, nah, just go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Rogers, no, oh, he's well, got a, he, oh, no. Play the oath bound on it. Yep. And then play the fool. He's going to let him that. pull the queen right back into his hand. And uh, I will good. pick up the, uh, the queen, I think. And he could have disgraced them That's using right. the, the soldier. Oh, no. You know, things were starting to go well for him there. It looked like maybe there was light at the end of that. And now also, you remember, this is, plays as a seven, but so it if is you have a three. lower card in your hand, mm -hmm. it, I play on it as it's a three, but you can play on it as though it's a seven. But Yep, that is true. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and play. That's just a heartbreaker for me. I, uh, I don't think he knows correct. the full power <laughs> of the soldier. I yeah. wish I could coach him, but you know we're gonna. Yeah, he's gonna yeah, have to learn about this in the losers bracket. Rules knowledge is really important in this game. You need to know what cool. every card well, does so because it will come really? in handy. And right there, the, he, he actually had a shot at that. It was starting to break his way, and he's wrecked now. There's there's nothing good that can happen to him at this point. I don't think, but maybe the princess he trade. Should've, he should have no. He should have flipped his king, and then he could have done the princess trade. Okay. This I, forces uh, him I to do that. Please don't have the king's, king's hand. hand. God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so that so disgraces the princess. So yeah, I played. You so it's that my lady. turn, right? I think so, yes. That's when you play your second assassin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if it wasn't for the king's hand, uh, Dolan would have actually won that too. Ah, brutal. Whose turn is it right now? It is right now Mr. Rogers' turn. Uh, he can play whatever he wants and win the game as long as he doesn't flip that sentry. Uh, it's your turn, correct? Nope. Um, or is it mine? Is it, I think it's your actually even if he does flip the sentry oh okay yep. he'll still be in for a one point win yeah. i don't think there's any any out at this Age point old question um actually you know what? it doesn't matter what card i'm gonna go for the safe move here i'm gonna play the sentry disgrace <laughs> uh, trade out wait is it non-royalty oh, it's okay. yeah it's non-royalty just, he, no, this fine. is really gilding the Lily rules, here. It's okay. The rules I'm actually prevent them from losing the game. <laughs> there you go. All right, I'm out. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have it. That's a two-point hand. So that is now an 8-0 win for Mr. Rogers, sweeping Dolan. I was like, Dolan. you don't need to take time to think, just play a card. Well, Christina we will be happy that I was not um, overthinking <laughs> method. <laughs> All right, All great. Right. Well, All there right. we That's have it. it. That's a uh... yeah. Oh, that was that was a fun game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Rogers is having fun. Yeah, I know. One side was having a lot of fun. That was a two-point hand, and uh, congratulations to Mr. Rogers um, for winning that. Um, so yeah, I mean that was a, a well-fought victory. Um, just kind of uh, kept on stabbing him with those two pointers all the way up to eight points, and that is eight to zero for Mr. Rogers here. That was 
a real beating. Um, you know, Mr. Rogers played extremely well, knows these cards inside and out, and he really used the knowledge of the ins and outs of this game to take advantage of every opportunity. And Dolan just didn't get the cards, you know, leaving aside maybe a tough play here or there. Uh, you know, he uh, really didn't get any advantageous hands, and Mr. Rogers uh, really played well on the 50-50 hands to put Dolan away here. So it's not over for him by any means, uh, but uh, yeah, there, there might be some studying on order for uh, that loser bracket game to, uh, to be able to turn it around. So, yeah, absolutely. So, all right. Well, there you have it. We're going to step out of Imposter King Stadium right now and back into the interview room uh, because it's time to talk with our competitors. See you over there in one moment. Well, Cena. You know, it was bound to happen where uh, there would be a shutout, and uh, it happened tonight. Uh, Mr. Rogers really... Uh Uh-oh. Give it one moment. Just had to get the internet back. Uh, But uh, right, um, that's right. Don't forget that Snapple plug. We'll get that in. But um, that's right, folks. Uh, It was bound to happen. It shut out. It happened tonight. Mr. Rogers playing terrifically and uh, making short work of things tonight. Yeah, I think uh, there was a lot of things there in play. I mean, it was two points, two points, two points all the way through, and I think that consistency really lended to Mr. Rogers' play style. Um, he plays a real uh, concise game that is really just about trying to exploit any weaknesses he can see in a potential hand. Yeah, you can definitely see the gears turning. And uh, as one uh, member of the chat noted earlier, he played more aggressively than we've seen in the last few games, and it really did pay off. He didn't just play to survive. He played to put pressure on his opponent, and uh, that manifested itself with opportunities earlier to take control of the hand. All right, so, yeah, we'll go ahead and pull in uh, Dolan first uh, to see how he's feeling after that match. Dylan? I wonder who that is. Dolan? Sorry, your, your audio's on mute. Um, tough, tough game tonight. Uh, never really got into a rhythm. Uh, playing against an extremely tough competitor. How you feeling after that one? Whoop, still can't hear him. Still can't hear you. Hold on. He's got to switch to the right he's input. Gotta, he's got he's to do the internet thing. and uh... Here we go. should be fixed now. It We're sure in is. business. So, cool, cool. again, tough hand tonight. How are you feeling after that? Yeah, no, feeling good. I think I did good considering, at least at the end, what I had. Um, but, yeah, no, um, it's good games. Close close the first couple. The last couple were just kind of like you get that feeling. Sometimes you get the hand, you're like, all right, well, you know, is there a point where you just say, do I hide the hand, the cards that I have in my hand and just say, all right, let's go to the next game <laughs> and give up three points? <laughs> That's right. Uh, we noticed you played, so you played the soldier twice, but you didn't use its secondary ability to disgrace cards. And that bit you when you wanted to play the the mystic the first time, because you tried to play the mystic and you're like, oh shoot, I don't have any disgrace cards. And then later on, um, you didn't disgrace uh, the queen, which uh, Will was able to kind of pick up. Um, tell us what was going uh, through your mind during that time. I did forget that that was an ability on the card. <laughs> Not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you're going to retain that information when you go into the loser's bracket? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think that's going to be the, the key. The key to victory in the loser's bracket is... Uh, it's the soldier. <laughs> it's the soldier. I think that's the thing. And and it was, you know, there was a higher power trying to call out to me because every hand for the last half of them, I got both soldiers, basically. And it was like, hey, hey read the abilities on the card, and I just didn't pick up on it. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's your calling card, I think. So, again, uh, not all is lost by any means. You're going to be uh, dipping into the loser's bracket, but there's definitely a path back to the daylight from there. Uh, so are there any takeaways you're going to take for your uh, next match coming up? Yeah, no, it's it's good. I still got all my secret moves. I didn't want to blow them early in the winner's bracket, so so hold those guys for my run. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. This no, is the uh, PP, PPD master plan. It's the, it's it's been, the master it's, plan right here. Yeah, exactly. It came all the way over from <laughs> other esports uh <laughs> And it's been written in the annals. Yeah, I filed a Freedom of Information Act request, and I got the big plan, and I uh, just got to you, you trust in the plan. So. That's right. If Peter Dager can pull it off, then surely <laughs> it applies to Imposter Kings. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, bummer that you have to go to the loser's bracket, but you still have an opportunity to fight back. Your next match is with Johnny Go next week. And uh, yeah. Uh, so do you have anything to say to Johnny Go? I'll see you in the loser's bracket. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, All Dolan. Right, see you guys. See it. That is going to be a great match, the Johnny Go Dolan match. Really looking forward to that one. Um, be interesting to see how that one shakes out. Two good players that are going to be uh, really fighting hard not to get eliminated. So yeah, absolutely. There you have it. There's Dolan. Uh, now it's time to talk with our winner of the night, Mr. Rogers, basking in the glory of a seven love blanking. It was an eight love actually. Our first one that actually went over uh, the the threshold you need to win. So pretty interesting when that happens uh, because. Yeah, it was just the, the cards were not there for him, I think. And so that's true. That was painful. Definitely that last hand had very few outs. And actually, I think he played that extremely well up until, again, the mishap with the soldier, which, again, is just a card knowledge thing that, uh, you know, you, you only do once once you have it burned into you after a case like that. Uh, I think he was playing that hand exquisitely and actually had a shot at winning from a very tough position. So. Uh, a shame that it played out as it did, but uh, Dolan's a fierce competitor. I know he'll uh, pick up some tips from the from the VOD. He'll be using that PPD master plan, uh, which includes ample salt, if I recall. There's plenty of salt uh, wherever PPD is involved. So Plenty of salt, and I think that Dolan um, is going to be really interested to see what he's going to come up with. Uh, ooh, we got a bit of an echo. All right, well, Will, great to see you uh, riding high after a, a momentous win here in the first round. You know, Cena pointed out that uh, you're by far the most polite of all of the uh, competitors here, uh, but there was a little bit of showboating towards the end, the classic uh, assassin spin and some other stuff. So how does it feel uh, with the first shutout of the tournament? Uh, it. I was uh, I was uh, a bit surprised. I think I got um, fairly lucky there. I made some uh, uh, let, let's call them risky plays, and um, they ended up working out, even though uh, they weren't exactly what I was aiming for. So, um, uh, good good games to Dolan, and um, he was a pretty good sport about it. <laughs> so i mean what was like the the thing that was really interesting is that uh, as uh, dan pointed out people in chat were saying the reason why we think you were winning was essentially because you're playing so aggressively do you think you're going to keep that aggression going throughout the tournament and do you feel like that aggression actually came from you watching previous games well so yeah actually um specifically ha after sort of watching uh the games that we just had in the first round tonight um seeing sort of you know, being frustrated to watching, you know, someone uh, slowly pull out a one point victory when they had a, had a good uh, solid lead or something like that. I definitely felt more confident pressing my luck a bit. And um, I'd like to keep that. Uh, it certainly helped that I pulled out an early lead. Um, I actually considered mulliganing one of my early hands and then obviously didn't end up needing my mulligan. I think I got very lucky with the cards I drew, especially towards the end. Um, so that made it easy to be aggressive, but I'd, I would like to keep that um, momentum and that uh, cadence going. Cool. Well, it's got to be a good feeling. You're advancing on to the next round in the winner's bracket of what should be a pretty hard-fought tilt coming up next. Uh, any takeaways from tonight that you're going to take forward into that next match? Um, I, I think the aggression was important. Um, I think, you know, you can't be, uh, it's easy when you're ahead, but it's, it is important to sort of make those um, more aggressive plays just because it makes it harder for them to uh, think to guess what you're going to do. Um, but uh that's going to be, you know, play the best I can and uh, hopefully uh, carry some of that forward. So really good games and uh, enjoyed it a lot. Thank you, Mr. Rogers, and congratulations again. You'll be facing off with uh, Master X 328 next week. Um, and, yeah, we look forward to seeing how you do against that match. Awesome. Thanks, you guys, so much. Great. Have a great night, Mr. Rogers. 
All right, so speaking of the bracket, let's take a peek over at what this does in the tournament bracket over on the bracket view. So here we have it. So with the win tonight, Mr. Rogers is indeed going to advance to a second round match against Master X 328. That would be game number seven. And as we mentioned, Dolan will be facing off against Johnny Go. That's game number five down in the lower bracket. Uh, our elimination match, that is going to be an intense one indeed. So now they're really playing. I think now all the players have announced their authority and uh, it'll be interesting to see now that everyone's gotten their feet wet in this tournament, how that changes everything. So yep. jumping on. This is the, this is the first uh, round after where everyone has played now. So everyone kind of knows what to expect and can look up videos on how other people play. That's right. Now you can see tendencies. You can see everything else. Gosh, it's going to be exciting. So, Cena, let me just ask you, when is the next match? Well, I believe our next match is scheduled at Tuesday at 9 p.m. And I believe that that is going to be Master X328, um, who we saw in the first game, versus Johnny Go, uh, taking a decisive victory 7-3, to three, versus, uh, as we just saw, Mr. Rogers, who plowed through with an 8-0 victory. So it's going to be an interesting match. Uh, we know that Master X328 has been a relatively new player to the to the scene, but was able to still figure out some pretty impressive combos. Whereas Mr. Rogers is just uh, as people are likening him in the chat, uh, Terminator um, potentially a, a bot um, could potentially be killing uh, people as we speak. So got it. So Tuesday night, nine o'clock is the next match in all of this. Uh, should be very entertaining indeed. You'll get to see Mr. Rogers against uh, who we saw last Tuesday night. That's going to be a great tilt. Uh, if you want to stay apprised of all of the latest in Imposter Kings and the tournament, a couple of different ways you can stay connected. First is to follow this stream that you're watching right now. Go ahead and click that follow button. The second is to join us in the Imposter Kings Discord, the link for which will be dropped here in the chat. Uh, any minute now by my broadcasting companion. Uh, uh -oh. just better go do that. Better, better go get that. Oh no. Just kidding. Uh, but anyway, I'll, I'll fill a little bit of time while you grab that invite link. Uh, but anyway, folks, thank you for joining for a lot of action tonight. It was a lot of imposter Kings. It was a lot of fun. Smash that follow. Just like Johnny go mentioned and, uh, looking forward to seeing you on Tuesday. If you're interested by the way in trivia, uh, tomorrow night at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, we're also doing on this same channel, Dan Coke Super Quiz. So grab a team, grab your friends, grab it all, and uh, come in and enjoy and have fun. Our league, Season 2 League, is starting up this week. So, folks, Cena, any parting thoughts before we call it a night? No, just want to thank you again for hosting and sharing, and uh, we hope to see everyone here on Tuesday, Tuesday at 9 p.m. Tuesday, 9 p.m., same bad time, same bad channel. All right, folks, well, have yourselves a good night, and we will see you all then. Good night.